Hello friends. Today I'm going to show you about uh, logging that exists in the data power. So this is a basic course in which we will see uh, what logging, how, uh, how logging is done on the data power appliance. Uh, what are the different types of logs that we can expect on the data power appliance? So uh, beforehand, I will tell you that logging is an advanced and complex topic. So in this uh, video, I'm going to touch upon very basic things uh, that are required in order to kick start with the uh, logging of the data power. So having said that, uh, let's say, uh, let's see uh, what are the different kind of loggings that are available on the data power. So there are two different kinds of logs that you can expect on the data power. One is uh, logs generated by uh, different kind of services, logs generated during, uh, uh, logs generated during transactions. They are called uh, system logs. And uh, there are two places uh, by uh, from where you can find out those logging information. One is that you can go here. This is a uh, view logs. You click it, and you will uh, go to a dashboard where you can see the loggings and uh, system logs. So status, view logs, and then system logs. So system logs is something which uh, will uh, clicking which uh, will land you up on the same screen uh, had you click the view logs. So let's click the uh, view logs. But before that, uh, this uh, let me tell you that this is the only one kind of logging that is available in the data power appliance. There is another kind of logging which is for admin purposes, and that is audit log. So audit log is the second category of uh, logging uh, that exists on the data power. Audit log is something which tracks what kind of changes have happened in the data power appliance. So for example. Uh, suppose that you restarted the data power appliance or you restarted the domain for that matter. So all that uh, information you can find in the audit log. Audit log is not visible uh, apart from uh, default domain. Since I am not in the default domain, you can see that I am in a different domain. So uh, audit log is something which is not visible to me. So if I go ahead and click here, it is not visible to me. But if I go and be in the default domain, and if I click the status, I will see audit logs visible to me. So I can click it, and I can uh, see the audit logging information uh, displayed over here. So this is uh, something uh, you can see that uh, there are, this is a system level logging. So basically, uh, if a domain has got restarted multiple times or something uh, like that, system level event, so logging is something uh, which could be seen for uh, that kind of activity. So this is the audit log. Audit log uh, resides in audit directory, uh, which is uh, which is uh, part of a, a file system that exists on the data power device. But that audit uh, directory is not visible even uh, you click the file management in the default domain. So there is no audit directory. Audit directory exists but is visible from uh, command line only. So you should go to the command line in order to see uh, what are the contents inside that audit directory. So this is about audit logging. Uh, let's move on to the system logs. So if I if I am in the default domain, uh, I can see uh, logs associated with other domains as well. So you can see that uh, there is one column called domain and uh, here uh, we have a uh, lots of logs for a particular domain called EAI. But if I am in a if I am in a non-default domain, say for example in EAI domain, and if I click logs, you see it shows logs of only the this particular domain, which is EAI domain. So uh, let me go ahead and tell you what are the different kinds of options that exist at as part of this logging and uh, how to uh, read uh, logs so that you you get started with the data power logging so uh, the i will tell you about this target filter and this thing a later but uh, let's go first uh, uh, let's go ahead and see uh, what these columns mean first the current timestamp is shown over here. This is data power current date timestamp. The time is something which is uh, 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 which depicts at uh, what particular instant uh, 
particular uh, log has been generated. So uh, this is the uh, timestamp. It is increasing from bottom up. So if you go to the bottom, say for example, if it is 132101, it is 1355. So you see that it is increasing when we go uh, uh, upwards. So that is how a logging is taking place. So most recent log is at the top and less recent log is at the bottom. So this is how the logging is arranged over here. Uh, I am not sure if I can click it and I can uh, change the order of this uh, logging. Uh, yeah, this cannot be changed. So this is something fixed. Next is the category. So category is uh, predefined in the data power. You can extend it. As I said, the logging is advanced and complex topics. So you can uh, you can always play around categories. But this, these are more or less fixed. And uh, uh, you can say that uh, these categories are something which are displayed over here as well. So in a rough sense, uh, in a, at, at a very crude sense, you can say that uh, these categories are something uh, which belongs to objects. So for example, we have created WSRR subscription and WSRR subscription is something which belongs to WSRR category. So that's why category is shown over like WSRR. You see that uh, there is something, uh, th there is something validation that is happening for uh, credentials. So this, uh, this activity relates to a crypto kind of uh, category. Uh, so uh, that's why the category is listed as crypto. So I tell you what, uh, let's say if you are debugging, if, if you are working uh, with an authentication uh, scenario, for example, and uh, if you want to see that uh, logs of that authentication transaction only, so you go ahead and click on AAA and you will see that logs will get filtered by that AAA transaction. So AAA is a category which deals with authentication, authorization and auditing. There is another video in which I have introduced how to configure and deal with the AAA. So AAA is a category. Similarly, if you select all as a category, you will see all the logs. This is similar to if you select filter as now. So that's how categories work. You can see there is a management category. There is a network category. So this will show, this is a typical way of categorizing logs on the data power. Then there is a level. So let me tell you about level first. If you click this box, you will see there are a lot of levels of uh, logging on the data power. The most fine grained uh, level is the debug level, which is at the bottom. So if you select a debug, all of the logs are uh, collected and shown you at this place. But if you select info, there are some, you can see that how this uh, impacts the logging. Similarly, if you select notice, this is uh, higher grade. The granularity is a little bit higher. So you can see that uh, this is a notice kind of log. So for uh, development and testing purposes, we keep the logging as debug so that all logs are visible to you. So that's how this uh, level works. <coughs> now, one typical example of level of logging is that error. So for example, if some kind of error happens, uh, let's say you are dealing with any kind of service and you sent a request to the data power and some kind of error occurred, you will see level coming as error. If it is not shown over here, but uh, uh, you can try and uh, uh, generate uh, error on the data power and you will see the level will be um, level is coming as an error. So you can always filter out uh, your logs based on this criteria. This is transaction ID. So transaction ID is basically there uh, for grouping the transactions. So if you click on this transaction ID, you will see all the transactions that are related to this transaction ID. Remember, transaction ID may not be unique when you restart the data power appliance or you restart the domain. So uh, you cannot depend upon the transaction ID for that matter 
to say that hey this is the transaction id earlier and this is the transaction id now they both look same so they both belong to the same uh, transaction no that's that, that's that's not uh, the correct way of doing it but usually if data power is not restarted or a domain is not restarted the transaction id remains unique from transaction to transaction so clicking this transaction id has filtered me out other logs and is showing me logs that belongs to only this transaction id so that is what transaction id is direction direction will tell you whether data power is uh, uh, whether this is a request or whether th this is a response so direction is something which will tell you if data power is internally doing something then it will not uh, tell you uh, direction i mean it will be empty for example all of these things are done internally by the data power these are mm, synchronization that uh, data power objects are i mean data power objects are getting synchronized with wsr so this is the direction column is empty the client uh, this column the client column it will show you the ip address of the client so since uh, there is no external activity taking place i mean there is no request response is going on in the data power right now so the client column is empty message id is something which is a code uh, uh, this is a internal code for the data power so if you click that message id it will show you uh, logs filtered on that message id and message id is uh, something kind of uh, for example uh, if you are dealing with uh, oracle then uh, uh, they they decide that uh, for this kind of exception the oracle code is like ora 9001 so that code is actually this code i mean this is just an analog it has nothing to do with oracle product in general so i'm just saying that this is a product code for uh, this kind of message wsr subscription now if you go ahead and see the message uh, the message is typically uh, typically uh, straight forward to uh, read the first thing is uh, the first field which is wsrr hyphen subscription this field is uh, the category basically this is uh, the category of the object now what object the object name is find service teleo hyphen subscription this is the object which has generated this error uh, uh, sorry this uh, log message after that uh, this is the log which has got generated so uh, this is how a uh, typical message is structured first is the category second is the object and third one is the specific message that uh, was generated out of that object so this is a uh, typical uh, th this is uh, one example of logging that is taking place in the data power and this is how to read data power logs by default only 50 lines are shown over here but if you want to increase that lines you can click 100 and you will see most recent 100 line items uh, 100 log items if you click all you will see all of the log but remember uh, logs are getting frequently archived so you see that at the bottom it says log has been archived successfully so you may not find uh, all of the logs that you are looking for over here if you are uh, looking for uh, debugging uh, a particular object then the first place to go is the system log uh, the system log uh, you should find uh, uh, logs corresponding to your object over here but in case if you are not able to find uh do not blame to the data power because it has archived the logs and you can see those archived logs over here let me tell you here this file management and the log jam and you can see that archived logs are over here default log 1 this is one archived log then default log 2 this is another archived log default log 3 this is another archive log and the current one is default log so there are four uh, files which get archived and uh, once uh, 
the, the once all these files are uh, getting filled up uh, the archival works in a cyclic manner so for example uh, if data power is doing a logging it will try to create log and once it exceeds 50 mb it will create it will create a log file called uh, default log 1 which is archived here and then it will try to write uh, again inside default log once it reaches to 50 mb size again uh, another file which is default log 2 is created and similar is default log 3 and after after uh, creating these three files if uh, let's say default log uh, fills up once again uh, these files are leveraged and uh, uh, logging works in a cyclic manner so this is how uh, logging works so as I said, uh, if you are debugging anything, if you are debugging an object or if you are debugging a transaction, you should not uh, uh, depend upon this default logging per se. Uh, for that, you can create a specific logging target uh, which collects logs for that particular object only. So logging targets are uh, created inside the data power to collect uh, logs which are related to a specific uh, objects and uh, uh, events once you configure the logging target uh, you have plenty of options how you want to store that log so for example right now all these loggings are happening on the data power file system but uh, on a production environment we don't want this kind of logging to be enabled in fact uh, in production environment it is not recommended that you enable the uh, uh, logging level as a debug. So in that case to uh, collect particular uh, logs, logs related to particular objects, you create logging target and you specify that uh, the logs for this logging target should go to uh, external source like uh, uh, for example a Splunk or uh, you can uh, utilize another uh, logging target like Evro or Thrift kind of thing. So uh, this is uh, about logging and uh, I have shown you how to uh, base, uh, read a basic level of logging over here. In some another video I, am, I will try to explain how to configure the logging target so that you have more uh, fine green control over how logging is happening and uh, over its content. One last thing which I would like to show you is that uh, the uh, logging level of a particular domain. So the logging, logging level of this particular domain is controlled from uh, here. Uh, you need to go to troubleshooting and you will see that logging level of this particular domain is set as debug. This is a very intensive level of logging. So if you want to decrease that level of logging, you will uh, select one appropriate option from here and you say set log level and confirm and you will see that uh, the overall logging level for this domain has now set to the error level. So that is how uh, and you can see that uh, uh, the warning which we were getting earlier that intensive level of logging is enabled uh, for this domain has just disappeared and this is because we set the logging level to uh, more higher uh, granularity level. As of now, I set it back to the debug level because uh, I am utilizing this for uh, uh, testing purpose. So you can see that the warning again crept up over here saying that intensive level of logging is enabled. So this is how uh, logging works for the data power and there is much more about logging. Uh, you can read more about this on uh, IBM website or I will try to create video for that as well. But that is all for now. Uh, thanks for watching. This is a good one.